teach you. This is the Commonwealth of Science Assembly. Mandated by God to raise a takeover generation. Reaching out to the unchurched and downtrodden with the word of grace. But there is a treasure inside your earthen vessel. There is something the world is looking for. Don't ever pay attention to those who rejected you. Those who rejected you, they just rejected a breakthrough. Because you are a walking miracle. This is Gonza. The word is our watchword. Worship is our attitude. Thanksgiving always on our lips. With hands lifted in surrender to his will. This is Gonza. An atmosphere always saturated with his presence. Healings, miracles, testimonies, and an unusual dress for experts is our reality. This is Koza. Welcome to this glorious assembly of heaven on earth. Welcome to Koza, the wealthy place. We celebrate you.
like my cup is running. I'm living in the overflow. It's an overflow. Yes, it's an overflow. As believers, our authority is established through the words which we speak. God's words in our mouth are as powerful as God's words in his mouth. Today, let your faith be in action as we exercise our authority and release the power of God through words. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your covenant of protection and preservation at work in my life. I declare this is the day the Lord has made and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you Lord because this is my season of lifting and elevation. For when men say there is a casting down then I shall declare there is a lifting up. This is the season where I record phenomenal testimonies because my case is different. This is my year of unprecedented exploits and I am only just getting started. I boldly declare that I am hidden in the sacred place of his presence. I am untouchable to the enemy. I am inaccessible to any shenanigans or machinations of the evil one. I am indestructible because there is a blessing on me. I function from Zion. I am connected to God and therefore I flourish in all seasons. The glory, royalty and splendor of God are in full display in my life. I know exactly what to do in this season. I have access to divine opportunities of increase and expansion. My steps are ordered to my wealthy place. I have become as a wonder unto many. This is my reality in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever you are speaking tongues, Oh, fire in my bones. Fresh fire in my bones. Shut up, locked up in my bones. My heart is burning fire for you. My will.
for you. My wheel is set in motion for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's raining testimonies, a lot of praise reports to handle again this beautiful Sunday morning. We have uh, quite a lot, but I'm just going to share a few with us today. The first praise report we have is of Brother Away Frank Alfred. He's actually a dedicated e-church member. He consistently watches our services from where he lives, you know. And then you could recall what happened to him. On the 1st of March, the first Sunday in the month of March 2020, he was just already ready, got his laptop ready to start watching the service. And just while he thought, okay, let me just do a quick laundry of what um, I have to do to get ready for the week. So, bro, Frank just got to his backyard and started out with the laundry, but didn't take notice of so much that was happening around him. There was actually a 6.5 kVA generator that was on at a time, but he just started out washing his clothes, worshiping, and then at some point, he started praying in tongues. Now, Habit, he didn't know that it was actually the Holy Spirit that prompted him to start praying in tongues. He was just doing that, and then at some point, he felt some shocks all over his leg, and was wondering what was happening. By the time he lifted up his leg, he noticed that both of his legs were actually placed on naked wires. And in fact, as he pulled off his leg, he saw uh, sparks from those wires that, you know, sparks were coming out, coming out of those wires. But thank God that the Holy Spirit, who had prompted him to start praying, who had made him understand the power of having to dwell in the presence of the Lord, God saved him from being electrocuted at that point in time. Somebody here, you are watching me, I want you to know, as you consistently dwell, in the presence of the Lord, there is nothing that the enemy has planned out that will ever come upon you in the precious name of Jesus. Can I hear someone shout hallelujah? Praise God. The next praise report I'm going to take is of Sister Faith Ogbole. Sister Faith is a dedicated church member who also watches the services all the way from Bayelsa. She's an assistant lecturer from her school. She's here, you know, testifying of God's goodness, you know, upon her life for two consecutive services. God granted her a hell turnaround and also a financial and career turnaround. On the 10th of May, while her father and the Lord was ministering, he got, I mean, when pastor was ministering, giving an instruction about the importance of worship, of praise, of thanksgiving, she keyed into it already. And while watching, she's always had this issue, consistent fever, headache. She's used a lot of medications, but nothing seemed to be happening. But suddenly, as she keyed into the key of worship, she testified that instantly, while they're worshiping, headache disappeared, fever disappeared, and she's here to give God praise. Somebody come and celebrate God for that. As if God was not done with her, the next service, which was on the 17th of May, while our father and the Lord was ministering, our father and Lord gave a word. How many of us will remember that he gave a word and said that even though Mordecai did not have access to the palace, he was positioned by the gate. And a man of God gave a word that you may not have access to the palace, but all you need to do is to be well positioned. She took that word and yelled a loud amen and receive it. Now the next day, next few days, which was the 19th, she was back at work at school. I mean, she's an assistant lecturer. Now, there was this ongoing discussion between her and one of her professors regarding a grant that the professor has gotten for the faculty. She decided that, okay, I would maybe send an email just to remind him, but she was prompted by the Holy Spirit to just go say hi to the prof and probably just throw in, you know, more like a casual reminder of the grant. And the, while the discussion ensued between her and the professor, the professor was so interested and asked her, come on, are you a PhD student or even are you a PhD holder in the, in the faculty? She said, no, I'm only an assistant lecturer. So the professor got very excited and said, if you at this level 
are so passionate. I've heard a lot about you. You've attracted a lot of local and international grants for your department. I'm so excited. So for this same reason, I am going to bankroll your PhD project. I thought somebody should be shouting out there. All experts paid as soon as she's able to come up with her PhD proposal. As if that was not enough, the professor said, look, as long as you're in that department and working with this passion, I will ensure that everything your department needs in its laboratories and in every area will be supplied for. Church, I believe there's someone here who is so excited and trusting God for something like this. All you need to do is to stay in the presence of the Lord. As you do that, whatever you desire will come attracted to you. Bible says that God led the animals to Noah. They came to him two by two. I pray for somebody here under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, as you dwell, as you may know in the presence of the Lord, whatever you need will come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Can I hear someone come on? Celebrate God for those praise reports. You are next in line in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
up in the spirit as we pray in other tongues and say, My laga baha. Let me hear your tongues. My lege baba baba baga soon taya baba. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you because you are the Lamb upon the throne. Thank you because you ever leave it to make intercession for us. Can you open your mouth and begin to build up in the spirit and say, Lege braga zo taya bo shata. Kalaga baba 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 ka so tele brogo so tele bo shata. Kelege baba 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 baba. Masa tele brogo so taya bo shata ya baba baba baba. Kalaga baba 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 baba. Oh, we love you, Lord. We begin to be bring an offering of worship to you. An offering of worship. Can you begin to magnify the Lord in tongues at home? Can you begin to bless the Lord at all times? Let his worship continually be in your mouth. Let the rivers of living water, let it flow from your being. Let it flow to God. Refuse to let your mouth be shut at this time. Because he is a lamb upon the throne. He is paid for your life. Open up your mouth and begin to usher in the presence of God on another level. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Fill this room with the glory of your presence. Touch my touch my heart and life. We are Because of your presence that makes all the difference. Thank you because your presence is everything. Thank you for what you are set to do in the lives of everyone viewing this morning in the name of Jesus. 
we decree and declare that your, the glory of your presence will saturate and overflow into the homes of all those who are viewing in the name of Jesus. We decree that nobody under the sound of our voice will ever remain the same. We decree and declare that the Holy Spirit permeates every atmosphere that is watching right now. We decree miracles in homes. We decree miracles. We decree open doors. We decree healing. We decree the unprecedented manifestation of God. Things that have not happened before today, let them begin to happen. We don't have to see rain. We don't have to see wind. We don't, mind, we need, we don't need to know how it's going to happen. But because your presence is there, it begins to happen right now. Let there be a release of God's presence like never before. We command it and we decree that it is so in the name of Jesus. Thank you because your word is coming forth powerfully and it will not return to you void, but it will accomplish in everyone that is hearing this word today what you sent it to do in the name of Jesus. Yokes are destroyed. Burdens are removed by the reason of the anointing that is backing up the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For there shall be testimonies. Undiluted, undeniable testimonies will follow this service today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wow, we're so excited to be coming into your homes today to share the word of the Lord. We're so excited because we know that it is well with you. We know that God is doing great things for you. That's why you are able to watch even if you are not feeling too good. God is set right now to do something unprecedented in your life. Joining me this morning is the avalanche and they're going to be worshiping and praying. And, you know, we're just going to be ex getting ourselves excited and blessed in the presence of the Lord. And God's word to you today. And this is the word of the Lord that God gave me for you today. He said, keep moving forward. No matter where you are, no matter how stuck you might feel. Keep moving forward. That's the word of the Lord to you. He says, no matter how bad it's been, no matter how ugly it's been, no matter how sad you have been, he says, from this day forward, keep moving forward. I want us to look at Job 17, 9, as we begin to delve into the fact that God does not expect us to be stagnated in this season. He says, I want you to move from failure to success. If you don't keep moving forward, you will not experience success. If you don't keep moving forward, you will not experience faith on another level. If you don't keep moving forward, you will not ex experience the joy of the Lord on another level. Thank God for what you've experienced before now. But God says, as you make up in your mind to do the word of the Lord today, it's a very simple word, but the word is wherever you are and whatever level you are right now, God says, keep moving forward. And the word of the Lord in Job 17, 19 says, the righteous keeps moving forward. Who are, how many of us are righteous this morning? We are all righteous, not because of our own righteousness. The righteousness we're talking about is not our own righteousness. It's not self-righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus paid the price for us. In Calvary, we are the righteousness of, of God in, in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Job 17, 9, it says, the righteous, they keep moving forward. And those with clean hands, they become. They were not before. But as they make up their minds to keep moving forward, they become what? Stronger and stronger. So I don't know the amount of strength that you've experienced before now. I don't know the amount of anointing that you've experienced. I don't know the amount of financial status. you've given. Whatever it is, God says there is a place called there. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, 18, the part of the just, the part of the righteous, the just is the righteous. The part of the righteous man in God is like the first gleam of dawn which shines ever, ever. You know, in the middle of our name, like I can declare, modele ever brighter, faster in bu, hallelujah. Ever brighter. You can just slot that in, in the middle of your name. And say, from today, no matter what I've experienced from before, no matter what they said I'm not going to do, no matter what who says nothing good can come out of me, no matter the failures that I've experienced, no matter how bad my family pedigree has been, my family testimony has been, he says from today, keep moving forward. 
Now, that is a decision you have to hold on to and make for yourself. And say, because God says it, I'm going to hold on to that word. Because a part of the just, can I have the New King James Version? The part of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter. For a child of God, there's never a better yesterday. The best of your life is the rest of your life. So no matter what the, it's on the news, whatever, whatever you heard on the news, whatever it's on the news, whatever they said, oh, this is going to happen to some set of people. This is what is going to happen to Africa. This is what is going to happen to, they've made a lot of projections. This is what's going to happen for you as a child of God. Your case is different. Because God says, I should say to you today, keep moving forward. And one thing you need to realize is that one thing you need to realize is that for you to keep, there are things you need to think about and do as you keep moving forward. You need to think and realize as you keep moving forward. There are some things that has to dawn on you that will keep you moving forward. Now, you are not just going to want to keep moving forward and say, oh, let me just go to the next street. Or go. No, it's not about that. There are things that you need to do. It's not about uh, a physical movement, first of all, even though you will move forward physically. You have to move forward in your mind. A mental movement forward. Hallelujah. One thing I want you to know, that the God that you serve is a God that is always moving forward. If you go to God a million times, you will never find him where he was. He has moved forward. It doesn't matter what the devil just did or did not do. It doesn't matter who is not happy about it. God always moves forward. God is always going forward. My husband said something. He said, the reason why God's, the, to, to thought of God's name is go is because God is always going forward. Hallelujah. See, I'm going to move forward. No matter what I've experienced. No matter what I've been through. No matter what they've said about me, no matter what has not worked before, I am going to keep moving forward. And you're going to, you have to declare it boldly if you're sure. Hallelujah. Let's look at Jeremiah 7, 24. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 7, 24. It says, but my people would not listen to me. They kept doing whatever they wanted, following the st stubborn desires of their evil hearts. They went backward instead of forward. This is God's mind concerning you. He said, don't go backwards. Instead of going backwards, go forward. Because there, you have to choose. You have to choose what is going to happen to you. Whatever is happening to you right now, you chose to be in that situation. Now, somebody says, oh, I didn't choose to be locked up or locked down in this COVID situation. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody decided that for you. But in the midst of this decision that somebody made for you, you can still keep moving forward. As you are locked down in your room, what are you doing with that lockdown? Keep moving forward. Because nobody can, nobody can actually lock you down. They, even if they tried it, it will only be for a while. You can lock somebody up, but you can't lock down their mind. You can't lock down the grace of God over their lives. You can't lock down the power of God that is working in their lives, that is working for them. Even if you lock them down physically, it's only for a while because the power of God is going to explode and unleash over them and they are going to step out. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Probably the reason why you're where you are with the mindset that you have, with the things that you have experienced in your life is, is because of the way you have allowed people to talk you down to being who you are. Or you have a last situation to box you. There is a box called backward. And you need to break that box this morning and say, no more. No more backward thinking. No more backward actions. No more backward ways of life. Lifestyle. No more backward lifestyle. No more backward decisions. Because the minute you know God's mind concerning you, the Bible says when you know God's word, it sets you free. It has the power to set you free. The word of God breaks every yoke. It destroys everybody, removes everybody. Hallelujah. 
How many of you are already moving forward in your mind already? That I'm not going to stay where they want me to stay. I'm not going to be who they want me to be. Because there are some people that want you to be in a certain state. Your, your decrease, your poverty, your sickness, your disease is getting the enemy excited. Because to him, that is a backward lifestyle where, where he wants you to be. That is a backward box where he has kept you and he has kept maybe generations before you and he feels that if I keep, if I've won before, I'm going to win again. But the devil is a liar this morning. Say I'm delivered. The Bible says upon Mount Zion, there is, there is no, it's not going to be. There is deliverance and the people of God will possess their possessions. I prophesy to you that in the name of Jesus, Everything that belongs to you, anything that belongs to you that God has set in motion for you, as you move forward, begin to receive it in the name of Jesus. It is yours now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith does not look backwards. Let's look at that scripture one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. How many are getting delivered already? He says, they went backward instead of forward. Because my heart desire for my children is for them to always go forward. Let's look at um, Jeremiah. Okay, we just looked at Jeremiah. Let's look at Nehemiah 9.19. Somebody declare backward never. Forward ever. In my life in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, but in your great mercy, you did not abandon them to die in the wilderness of back backwardness. You did not allow them to die there because you're not a God of the wilderness of backwardness. The pillar of cloud still led them forward. Even when God was angry with his children, he still led them forward. Even when you, you don't do everything that he expects you to do, he will still lead you with instructions that will take you forward. Keep moving forward. Keep reading your Bible. Keep praying. Keep declaring. Don't say, oh, we've prayed too much. We are not seeing any results. You need to keep keeping on. Because the only way forward is forward. Somebody shout, the only way for me is forward. There's nothing for me at the back. There's nothing. The only thing you have at the, that you need to hold on to at the back is what God has done for you in the past. Nothing else is at the back. What they said to me in primary school, what they did not say to me in primary school, who said I was ugly? Who said I was fat? Who said I was short? My mom said I'm not going to amount to anything. That was at the back. That was backwards. That was, at, that was before now. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. You are going to keep moving forward. Because the two eyes that God gave to you are in front of you. You must go forward. You must move past that situation that has kept you for so long. That keeps playing back and forth in your mind and you don't want to let it go. And all every, every, every circumstance in your life has, so, is, is, is determined by that situation. You have to think of that situation before you can make a decision. You have to think of that situation before you can do anything. You have to think of, ah, if I, I have to think, me, is it my type? Because this happened to me three years ago. And the same thing happened to me six years ago. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. See, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep declaring the word of the Lord. I'm going to keep being who God wants me to be. In the name of Jesus. Let's look at Philippians 3.13. God is excited when we move forward. And when we keep at it. That means we don't stop. To keep doing something means you don't stop. You don't get, you don't faint. You don't grow weary. You don't look backwards. You don't look sideways. You don't know. You don't, you don't look at who is not doing it. You look at what God said to you. And that is what keeps you moving forward. What did God say to you that will keep you moving forward? He says, no, dear brothers and sisters. I have not achieved it. But I focus. Focus is necessary when you want to keep moving forward. Hey, somebody did not come to church. Say, I'm not going to come to church. 
Somebody did not pray. So I'm not going to pray. Somebody did not pass. So when are you going to decide what you want to do for yourself? Decisions decide your destiny. This is a decision you have to make for your destiny. Keep moving forward. There might be baby steps, but keep moving forward. There might not be gigantic steps, but keep moving forward. Even the snail made it to the ark. He says, but I focus. When you are focused, you don't look around. You don't know who is not feeling good about what you're doing. You don't know that somebody does not like what you're doing or somebody's thumb is turning them. He said, hallelujah. But I focus on this one thing. I don't focus on many things at the same time because I will lose focus. I focus on this one thing. So this one, one thing that you're going to focus on is that God says to you today, keep moving forward. I didn't move forward last year. This is a new year. Keep moving forward. I haven't done anything much since uh, January. Keep moving forward. God is taking you on a journey. Life is a journey. It's not an event. Success is a journey. It's not an event. As far as God is concerned, as you do his word, you're already successful. Because it is what happens at the end of the day that matters. But I focus on this one thing. I don't focus on many things. Forgetting. How do I keep moving forward? I focus on not on forgetting the past. Now, there's a difference between moving forward and looking forward. So, the word is keep moving forward. But God says the instructions to help you to keep moving forward is that you will look forward, forgetting. So, say, I'm looking forward, forgetting what is in the past. Because I can't be looking forward and backwards at the same time. Hey. God says move forward, but ha, ha, what happened to me? Ha, ha, no. When I look back, I can't look forward. Any friend that you have that is not moving you forward or making you look forward is not your friend. Check out of that relationship. Every time they meet with you, they remind you what happened to you three months ago, six months ago. Wake up, smell the coffee, sweetheart. That was a super old story. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning. So every morning I have grace to do new things every single day. God says, I don't even remember what you did that is wrong one minute ago. Not to talk of yesterday. So who are you, oh man of God, that is trying to remind me of my failures of three months ago? That you didn't do it six months ago. You, didn't, you only know about the things that you didn't do well. When are you going to build a catalog of the things that God has set before you? Build a catalog of things that God has set before you. And say, God says, I have so much in front of you. I have not seen it. He has not heard it. It has not entered the heart of any man. What God keeps ready. He's so ready. If I don't move towards it, I will not experience it. I will not see it. If I keep looking back, oh, they said, and that happened. That did not happen. You can't go forward because looking back and looking forward reduces your speed. If you are driving and you're looking at the rear view mirror, you are not going to go far. You are probably going to be an accident going somewhere to happen. Keep looking forward because God says keep moving forward. The only way to move forward is to look forward. Modele said so. He says one thing I focus my energy on. Because that, that, is, that is the 21st century version of that scripture. One thing I focus my energy on. And you are not the one to decide what I focus my energy on because you didn't give me the energy. If my energy is dissipated and I don't have anything at the end of the day, you are not going to be the one to pay for that. You are not going to be the one to be challenged for that. I and God are in this business together. 
If I use my energy for God, it is for God. It's not your business. If I use my time, because that is what translates your energy, your time. What do you use your time for? Do you use your time to look at what is happening for other people? When are you going to look at what is going to happen for you? And it's good for you to look at what is happening for other people, but don't stay there. Because envy might step in. Jealousy might step in if you don't guard your heart. So you need to guard your heart with all diligence and lose sight, lose sight of what other people are doing and focus on what God is doing in your life. And right now you might not see anything, but if you keep moving forward, I has not seen it yet, he has not heard it yet, it has not entered into the heart of any mere man what God has prepared. He says, I've opened, there's an, I've opened doors before you that no man can shut. And I'm going to shut some doors before you that no man can open. Every door of accident, every door of virus, every door of sickness, every door of delay, every door of denial, every door that doesn't belong to your destiny, we shut it down today in the name of Jesus and we release to you the power to be victorious and to step into doors of opportunity, doors of the miraculous, doors of, doors of victory, doors, doors of next level in the name of Jesus. You will not remain the same because you will keep moving forward. That is your testimony. That is your testimony. Let's look at Proverbs eleven twenty three. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep moving forward no matter what anybody feels. I'm not bothered about your feeling. Your feeling has not paid my salary. So I'm going to keep moving forward. And even if you pay my salary, I'm still going to be, keep moving forward. He says, the, the godly can look forward, not to ordinariness. They are looking forward to a reward. Say, I'm looking forward to a reward. As I keep moving forward and I focus looking forward, I look forward to a reward. Receive a reward. The Bible says they that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. They that diligently focus on his word. They that diligently worship him. They make out time for him. He is all that matters. I don't have time for talking people down and goes, Mr. A wore a brown shoe, Mrs. B wore a short, what's, it? What's, what's all that? And then that's what you're going to use almost all your life to do, talking about people. People that don't even know that you exist. I am looking forward because there is a reward with God that I'm going after. How are you going to look forward to a reward? Looking forward, not Looking forward in, into emptiness. You are looking forward to a reward. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's look at that scripture in the message translation. I'm so excited because God says I should keep moving forward. What if he says I should look back? What am I going to do? But I thank God. Thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. Always. God is not ever going to change his mind about me keep moving forward. Because that's who he is. He's a God that keeps moving forward. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel 1.12. Ezekiel 1.12. Praise God. Let's just begin to speak in tongues and say, Malaga baga satya baba baba. In this season, more than ever before, I will keep moving forward. I can hear your voice. Release that tongue over that word. And say, this is my season of to keep moving forward. It doesn't matter if I've not been moving around in the city. But where I am, from where I am, I'm going to decide to keep moving forward in the spirit. First of all, with God. In Jesus' name, Ezekiel 1.12 says, They went in whatever direction the Spirit chose 
and they moved straight forward in any direction without turning around. You know the reason why people look back the most is because somebody reminded you about your past. Somebody reminded you. And you know something? The devil is going to use somebody. So be prepared. Even when you make up your mind to move forward, he's going to use somebody to come and tell you, oh, but you know, you really need to be careful about this, your decision to move forward because it might not really be what God is saying. So what is God saying? So tell me what God is saying. God says I should go and cry. God doesn't say you should go and cry. God will not say go and bury your head. God will not say stay on your bed all day and be weeping because of what you have done. When you even offend, God forgives you in a nanosecond. In a split second, he forgives you. So who are you that says, eh, don't move forward. Stay where you are. Die there. Don't forgive yourself. Don't let go. Don't. Go. You are getting ready to lose if you don't listen to God. After all you've been through, you will not still listen to God. You won't make up your mind to listen to God at this 20th, 21st century, 2020. After all that God has done, you, do you know how many people have gone with this season of coronavirus, but he kept you, he maintained you, he sustained you? Are you better than those that the pandemic swept away? We are not rejoicing over their downfall, but we, we are rejoicing in the fact that God is so mindful, mindful of us. So after God has done all that for me, the little instruction, three letter word instruction, three, yeah, three word statements, three word statements. There are only three words in that statement. Keep moving forward. From Genesis to Revelation, never did God tell his people, go back. He says, tell Pharaoh, tell my, let my people go. Tell Pharaoh, if he doesn't let my people go, go forward, I'm going to kill his firstborn. Maraka Shataya Baba. Any devil that says you will not go forward. Maraka Shataya Shataya Baba. Raga da 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 ba Shataya Baba Baba Baba. In this season, more than ever before, you need to move forward. We release you into that grace. It is done now in the name of Jesus. Because you will move forward. In that marriage, you will move forward. Over your children, you will move forward. Over your fin in your finances, you will move forward. No matter the ma how, how much scarcity you're experiencing, how much shortage you're experiencing, God says it's time to move forward and keep at it. Before I formed you, I knew you and I ordained you to go forward. I sent you to the face of the earth to come and go forward. Any stagnation, you need to be angry right now. A righteous indignation should rise within your spirit and say, no more, no more. And it's not until you change location. Oh, maybe if I get a better job, or maybe if I leave town. No. God says, first of all, tag with me on another level. Move forward in the spirit. Do all those things that I've told you to do for a long time that you refuse to do. Pray like that is, the, that is the only breath you have. Make prayer the only breath. As you breathe in and out, the prayer is going. I'm not going to hold up, taking another, another breath without releasing a word, an offering worthy of my God. He says, whatever direction the Spirit led them, in whatever direction the spirit chose, they moved straight forward without turning around to observe people's faces. Who, who, who is feeling it? Who is not feeling it? Who likes it? Who does not like it? Who approves? Who doesn't approve? It's time to move forward. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just begin to speak in other tongues. That is our heavenly language. It gives us unusual access. I'm going to share this last scripture, Zechariah 5, 5. One thing you are so, that is so sure about me is that I will keep moving forward. Make that your decision. Thank God for what has happened before, but from this day forward, whatever skill God has given me, I will keep on improving. I will sing to God like I'm singing at the Grammys, if you're a singer. I will worship with abandonment for hours, like I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm before f- millions of people. That is the way to move forward. I will prove to God that I am, an, I am a willing and obedient child. And it's not until you see results before you move forward. God signs you up when nobody signed you up. He signs you up and say, my mark of approval is on him and nobody can stop him. Even when he has not met the first person that can help him. Then the angel who was talking with me came forward and said, look up. Because when I look forward, it gets to a point, God says, look up. And see what's coming. Look up. Move, the, move beyond this realm. Realm of the ordinary. Of what everybody is doing. This is the way they do in our village. Look up. And see. Because if you don't look up. I also said this one time. said, if you don't look up, you can't get up. Because if you continue to look around and say, I don't have a transport fear. You, there, let me tell you something. You, there will be something you will look that will, When you look around, there will be something you will look at that you will find out that you don't have. But we look beyond what we can see and we look up. We, we suspend the natural. And we move to the super empirical. We begin to feed on what God is feeding on. Hey, my satire, God is feeding on worship. He said, I looked at the whole world, the whole universe. Nowhere can contain me except the atmosphere of worship. He says, if I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you. How do I move from where I am to where God wants me to be? Why don't you create an atmosphere of worship? Because that's one thing that God cannot give himself. He says, I am seeking true worshipers who will worship me, not themselves. Worship me in spirit, God talking. And in truth, who will just focus on me? Who will make me their most necessary food? Who will make me everything? He says, look up and see what is coming. Because if you don't look up, you will not see beyond where you are. If you don't look up to the heavens, if you don't look up to the word of God, if you don't look up to the supernatural things that God has done and is doing, you are not going to move from where you are. You will only complain. He told Israel, you have circled this mountain for too long. Go forward. Hey. Somebody need to shout, hey. In their home right now. (laughs) Enough is enough. Enoughness. Enoughness of this going on the rigmarole. The Holy Spirit has literally beg you, come and pray. Even while you've been locked down for six months. So the reason why you didn't pray wasn't because you were busy. Mm. You didn't pray because you didn't see that your life actually depends on it. You didn't see it. 
you didn't have a revelation. But when you look up, you will get up. And you begin to see what's coming. Stop trying to help run out of skelter. Stop looking for what is not lost. Stop looking for love in the wrong places. Look up to Jesus. The author and the finisher of your faith. I release a grace for you to do this word into your atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus. You will not remain the same. You will hook up to the heavenly frequency and begin to do the undoable. You begin to think the unthinkable. You begin to see yourself where you never saw yourself before. Let your eyes open. Let your mind be expanded in the name of Jesus. Can I hear your tongues as you begin to release the power of God to go to another level in your atmosphere? Because all things are possible with God. Nothing is impossible with him. Joel chapter number 2 verse 4. As we begin to round off. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah means victory. I have the victory. Because I've made up my mind to do the will of the Lord. He says they look like horses. They charge forward. They, don't, they are not sluggish. They don't drag their feet towards God's instruction. They do what? They charge forward like war horses. In this season, God says, it does, oh, everything that has happened this year is a distraction. Heavy one. But even in the midst of every distraction, he wants you to keep your mind focused because God is doing a lot. Even when the devil is is making noise, because it's noise. They look like horses. That's, that, that is, God is describing us. They look like we charge forward like war horses. After we have been incubated by the presence of God, after we've taken in the, the needed strength for the next level. Make sure you don't step out of this season empty-handed. When you have been enveloped by the presence, so much so, you, you don't have a choice, but your life will charge forward. Your life does not have a choice but to charge. Do you know what it means to charge forward? No restraint. Nothing can hold you back. The, 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 the heaviest metal, iron bar, cannot hold you down. He says your gates shall be continually open day and night, and it will not be shut. And men from all over the world will bring to you the wealth of the nations. As you move forward and look forward and look up and charge forward, I see you stepping into what you have not stepped into before. Don't stop speaking in tongues because the power is in your mouth to take this word to become what it's supposed to be in your life. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Last scripture as we pray with this scripture, Isaiah 58 verse 8. Isaiah 58 verse 8. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It says, then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will heal quickly. Your godliness will do what? Lead you forward. And the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. How dare you 
ever think that you'll be part of the people that coronavirus can come and carry me away. Coronavirus. My neighbor says he has coronavirus. After all that God has done for you, you were a baby and measles covered you. You were a teenager, you had typhoid. You had high fever. You've had all sorts of illnesses. And the Lord, who is strong and mighty, the ever-present help, the one that doesn't turn back to any battle, he never turns back. He doesn't faint, nor does he grow weary. Who are you talking about? How dare you allow fear to, to, cre- to, 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 to saturate your atmosphere? How dare you, after all that God has done for you? Fix your thoughts. Fix your thoughts. Let these scriptures be your reality. Then your salvation, it says it will come like the dawn as you move forward. And your wounds, yeah, you have wounds, but they are healing quickly. Because I'm not going to keep nursing wounds. Your godliness will lead you forward. And the glory of the Lord will be your real God. It will protect you from behind. Kasataya baba baba. This word is your reality today. Begin to blast in tongues. Blast in tongues. Blast in tongues. This is your reality. Blast in tongues. You can't hold back on the spirit of God. Let's just begin to worship God. Let's just begin to worship God. Can I get a victory song? Who has a song in their spirit? Let it release. It's into the...
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 30. As we close, I just want to show you this. I know a lot of us are using our data, but it's worth it. 1 Samuel 30. It says, David asked the Lord after they have taken his family. And he was in, he had gone through so much. The Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. And the Bible says, should I chase after this band of raiders? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. As you move forward today, I want to prophesy to one person. Whatever what's behind you is behind you. But God says what is before you is more than what is behind you. You will surely, I love that translation that says, pursue, overtake, and you will recover all. If you don't pursue, you cannot overtake. And you cannot recover all. He says you will surely overtake them and without fail, you will do what? Recover all. Say, Lord, I'm recovering all. Whatever it is that the enemy set up that I have lost in these five months, say, from this day, I recover all. Without fail. Can you declare that into your atmosphere and say, I pursue and I surely will overtake them and I begin to recover all without fail in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Get ready with your offerings. It's offering time. It's tithe time. God has been good to you. It's time to give it to his house. And the Bible says, when you give, it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. He will cause men to give to your bosom. That is your testimony today. You will not remain the same. Your finances will not remain the same. No matter how bad it is, God is set to take you forward. In Jesus' precious name. We love you and we celebrate you. Thank you for viewing. And just get ready with your offering because the avalanche also will be ready to take you into another session of praise and worship in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Ooh, Hallelujah. If you know God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, come on, give God a big shot wherever you are. Come on. Hallelujah. Woo. Let's have some good time right now.
your neighbor prophesy. Don't give up. Woo. Keep moving forward, somebody. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. One more time. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's able. Somebody shout about it. 